Okay, let's focus on the breath for a bit. Hanam pavana dulom sapaknang. You want to be on good terms with the breath. You want it to be a comfortable place to stay. Otherwise, if you're fighting with the breath, after all, the body gets uncomfortable, and the body is uncomfortable, and the mind doesn't want to stay, and then you're off someplace who knows where. So think of the breath as your friend. You're trying to make friends with the breath, which means you've got to be very observant of the breath, in the same way you'd be very observant of a friend. And you can't rush right in and say, hey, we're going to be friends. You've got to get to know the person well, so they trust you. In the same way, the breath won't open up to you unless you're very gentle with your adjusting. When you look at it and test it a little bit and then look at it again, you have to be very, very observant. As the Buddha once said, there's only, there are two things that are absolutely essential to knowing another person. One is to be with that person for a long time. And the other is to watch very carefully and then have dealings with that person. So it's the same way with the breath. You have dealings with the breath. You lengthen it here, you shorten it there, you deepen it here. And see what happens. And give it time, because sometimes it won't show its res results right away. But if you stick with a certain way of breathing for a long time, then you'll begin to realize, okay, this kind of breathing does this to the body. You know whether it's good or bad. We have a sense of some kinds of some kinds of breathing are energizing, others are calming. Remember that. So next time you need a calming breath or you need an energizing breath, you'll know what to, you'll know where to look. And at the same time, you have to be very careful about other people. It's like developing a friendship and realizing that this other person has some enemies, or well, you don't go hanging around with the enemies. In this case, it's all those things outside that are going to distract you and pull you away. When Lumpu Utai was here, he was talking a great deal about how important it is if you're trying to get the mind to be still, if you're trying to get the mind to be developed. You've really got to exercise restraint, both in what you do and say and think, and also in the things that you look and listen, look at and listen to. Don't be afraid that your eyes and ears are going to feel depleted from disuse. I mean, the eyes and ears, they don't need anything in particular. It's the mind that's hungry for sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. And you may not want to feed that hunger for a while and learn how to find a sense of well-being with the breath. If you're going to feed off something, feed off the breath. Be more and more observant of the breath. The fewer openings you have for little bits and pieces of pleasure outside, the more you're going to have to really work on developing a sense of pleasure with the breath here in the present moment. To try to keep these principles in mind. This way you become good friends with the breath, and as John Lee says, wherever you go, you have a friend. When you're sick, you have a friend. When you're aging, you'll have a friend. Even when you're dying, when the time comes to leave the breath, you'll leave well. The parting will be, be easy. So try to develop this friendship as carefully as you can. <laughs>